Data Studio parameters. Let's begin. So the first thing is a simple use case of a numeric parameter. What I want to demonstrate in this first example is how to create a parameter in the data source, how to choose the name, type, range, etc. How to get value from the user using a control and how to use the value in calculation, how to show it on a chart on a score. So for the rest of the, this session, for the rest of this session, let's just agree on some things. Anything that is that has a white background with black text is live data coming from a data. In this case, it's coming from Google Analytics. Anything which is purple or has a purple background is either a parameter or related to a parameter because parameter, this is the color data studio uses to show a field of a kind parameter. Dimensions are green, metrics are blue, and parameters are purple. Anything with a yellow background or any other background that I use is something that has a calculation based on a parameter. So this is the out, this is the input, this is the input in form of parameter, this is the input from live data, this is the output, these are the output. So in this case, we have last quarter's revenue as a metric, it's an existing field in the data source and the value extracted from the data. This is a fact, this lives somewhere else. We have the quarterly revenue increase projection, which we want to get from the user and they can in input a number in the percentage format. So they could say that, yeah, I expect next quarter to be 20%. I expect to have 20% increase next quarter. And as soon as they click outside the input box, so basically focus out, finalize their input, the numbers, the calculated numbers, they will change to reflect the new calculation. This is the revenue multiplied by 1.2, increased by 20% is this one. This could be a really nice tool, even simple, but it's a nice tool for a kind of business owner or marketer to say, okay, if I'm looking at 20% increase based on real data that I had, based on my historical data, what would it look like? Now, let's see how we can create that. Let me just remove this one. So we can start from scratch. We create a new parameter. Okay. Delete and it's gone. First of all, we create the parameter in the data source. So we head over our data source. We select our data source. I want to create my parameter in this GA demo account. And I can click add a parameter. The parameters that we create, they will always end up at the end of the list of the fields. So these are the parameters that I created for this demo. But we want to create a new one. So I can click add a parameter here. Or I can go to resources, manage added data sources, try to edit my data source, and then click add a parameter here. This is also another way of accessing the same. Okay, I'm going to click here. And this is the interface for creating a new parameter. The name of the parameter, percentage, percentage increase number two, because we already have a percentage increase. I just deleted the control from the page, but I didn't delete the parameter. So this is our user-facing name. This is the parameter B, which is the handleized version of the parameter that they teach to the users behind the scenes to understand the parameter. And then we need to choose the data type for the parameter. Is this a text parameter, the number, a whole number, a decimal number, or boolean? So if I want to get the percentage value from a user, which one of these do I need? Whole or decimal or text? Either whole or decimal. Yeah, it depends if I want to allow them to put 10.5% or not. But in this case, I'll go with a whole number, right? If they can put 10, 20, 30, 5, 1, 2, anything. Now, do I want to allow them to put any value? Yes, I can allow them to put any value, even a thousand percent. But I can also limit this parameter to only accept different values. If I, if a marketer or the CEO or someone higher up would instruct us that, yeah, we only want to allow our team to enter either 10%, 20 or 30% to see the values, then I can put the value and the label. The label could be different. It could be text. It shows 10 to the user to select, but the actual value, numeric value, which needs to correspond to the actual data type is 10. And I can add other value like 20 and do it like this. But for this one, I don't want to do that. I want to define a range. If it's a quarterly increase, 
because in the name we have percentage increase, we can have percent change because it might be decreased. So I would allow from minus 100 to 100. And for the default value, I put 10. So the user can put anything between minus 100% or 100% and the default is 10. I would save it. I know the name is percentage change. I click done. And usually if I'm lucky, I should be able to find it here, which I don't. In this case, do not panic. It's usual data studio, just refresh the interface and relax and then search for it again. Change, yeah. So I have my percentage change and it is defined. It is here for me to use. Now I need to get the value. So the second step is choose, I've chosen the name, et cetera. The third step to get the value from the user using a control. So I should be looking at the controls. Now for a number, which is free form, drop down list doesn't really fit. Input box is something I want to actually use. I put it here. I change the size, I change the color to indicate it's not needed, but to indicate that this is a parameter in this demo that I want to receive from the user, but it shows page title. I don't want page title. Now, this is a control and page title dimension is applied to it, it's assigned to it. I want to assign my parameter to this control so they are linked together. Again, searching for it, change, percentage change, number two, drag and drop. And now I have a control, an input box connected to a parameter. And it already is already showing me the default value for the parameter. So whenever the report loads, if I refresh it, just to make sure the, the default is 10, I will change it to 25% to see what happens. 25, 542, 50, 542. Why doesn't it work? You have to make the calculation with this parameter, not with the previous Yes, one. yes. Excellent. So these are just visuals. This is, it doesn't mean data studio knows that it has to multiply this newly made parameter by revenue. So <clears throat> the final step is to use it in calculation or show it on a chart. The easiest way of using a parameter is showing it on a chart. And the easiest chart available is a scorecard. So I can try to show the value of percentage change directly somewhere on the report. If it's a goal, if it's a target, they might want to see what they've created. So here it's a scorecard is already connected to percent increase. And this is the way that it has been defined. We cannot put a parameter directly on a scorecard. We need to create a custom field that shows the value of that parameter. And that's how easy it is. So. I'm going to rename my custom field to present change and my formula would be the value, the current value of that parameter, which is percentage change to, this is the name of parameter divided by hundred. And then I want to show it as a type of the percent. So this is how I calculate the percentage based on this number because data studio right now doesn't allow us to directly input a percentage. So I have to input 50 divided by hundred put it as a percentage and then hit apply. Now I would see the exact value and set as the value for this prompt. Now in the second one, instead of dividing it by a hundred, which is basically converting it to a percentage, we want to perform some calculation. Revenue projection next quarter would be revenue, the metric coming from my data source times one plus percentage. So if it's 20% would be one plus 0.2. So revenue times 1.2, which is basically the formula that we want. Percentage change number two divided by 100. So if I click apply, so now this number should be revenue increased by 50%, which is actually what is doing. So that was the end-to-end -end demo, creating, adjusting a parameter, getting the value, from the user using a control, using the value in a calculation or showing the value in a scope.